Hey everyone, welcome back to what's happening in real estate this week. And we got Conrad Zarini here with uh, Remax Escarpment and Remax Niagara and Brian Hogbin at uh, Mission 35 Mortgages. We got the top crew here, myself, Rob Golfi <laughs> with Remax, the Golfi team. So guys, um, I'm going to tell there's a story here. And uh, one of our agents uh, bought a pre-construction probably, I don't know, maybe four years ago. Uh, uh, or five years ago, she moved in about a year ago, right? And the condo, what they said when she bought the condo fees would be about 245, 250 bucks. Fine. No problem. I can afford it. I'm going to buy it. She buys it within not even a year. Like I'd say probably maybe 14, 15 months later, they more than double the condo fees. Wow. Okay. wow. And, it, yeah. and it's a, and it's a row. It's an up and down row. It's one of those up and down ones where there's a, a unit on the main and then there's a unit. Oh, on wow. The, okay. Con, yeah. A condo. Mm -hmm. So now I got to tell you something like what, like, can they do that? Like what, like, like people buy these things based on like, what if it's a retiree based on their pension and now they just kind of mess that up. Can, can they, is there any recourse of, of the owners of these condos it, saying no, like this is baloney, like this is crazy. Well, it's yeah, it's out of their hands because you know we got the Condo Act. The, the Ontario Condo Act is pretty severe, and and they probably did a uh, a reserve fund study and found out that at the the rate that they were going to be able to um, you know uh, fix things down the road, they probably were underdone, and the builder probably talks to the the you know because they take the first year with their with their property manager. So they probably, you know, beg, borrow, and steal <laughs> kind of thing. And then duct taped uh, everything yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. I think you guys still talk to a real estate agent. You maybe talk to, you know, look, get an agent to help you out with like properties in the area. And just, you know, if it's too good to be true, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. And, uh, well, think about if you buy in Hamilton taxes now, taxes are going to go up 6.9% next year. You know, uh, whatever your taxes. So if you bought a condo at X and it's 1% of the purchase price, well, your 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 taxes are up almost seven percent the minute you move in, uh, so there's a lot of those non-recoverables that are when, and that's what's stressing out the condo market right now, right? Like, and what like, they, what would be the difference between doing that and a special assessment then? Because it sounds like, you know, for the condo fee to double, that is exorbitant, right? But like sometimes you see the special assessment for two, three, four thousand bucks. Or maybe even ten. Yeah, why wouldn't like, they do like, that could, instead? Is there any recourse that they can uh, file a lawsuit against the developer and say, "Listen, we bought this based on mm. this condo mm. fee." Everybody comes together and they just say, "Like, I mean, there's got to be something that the uh, condo owners can do." Like, I remember in Stony Creek, the there was one the where a lot of the uh, elderly moved in right by. I think you know the property where the uh, Stony Creek uh, Dairy used to be. There was yes, a, yeah, a lot yeah. a lot of elderly people moved into that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now they those condo fees went up quite a bit, and some people actually had to sell and move and get out of there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, but there's got to be some kind of recourse that they can stop this from happening because well, they, yeah. that's misinformation. They like, is there is there can you put on the contract when you're purchasing? I uh, I think uh, you got to really look at these numbers because they're going to give you a proposed budget. You know, they have to supply you with a proposed budget when you buy it. Got to really look at those numbers and, and you may have to get another expert. Uh, and if you notice, it's always they have one property manager for the first year, the one that the builder got. And then the year later, it's always someone else and they kind of uncover things. And it just, you know, I, I, I don't know if the accounting practices are as you know as entrenched when it comes to condos and things like that um uh, like when the builder hands it over look I, I i will say this you're rob it's a brilliant point you make but i think everybody's got to do due diligence and if it's too good to be true i will tell you this it will be when it comes to uh those condo fees 100 percent. and i think right? it's, it's, it, it's probably looking false, at the builder false... too though right the yeah, builder it's... like who's the builder if you got a brand new builder that's something that you should take into consideration. The brand new builder we saw it with the mm. Tiffany Square downtown never got built. We saw it with the Connolly yep. never yep. got built. But if you have a brand new builder and they build a condo, they mean that could happen, right? But when you have your reputable ones that have been around for a long, long time, they're going to have a track record of building good things. Yeah. Well, so isn't, that's isn't, to isn't it false information? Isn't that false mm -hmm. information? Listen, I'm here. I'm a buyer. Listen, I'm dependent on the, the information. Like we're liable for inf correct information mm -hmm. as realtors. Why wouldn't yeah. a developer be correct? Uh, have to be correct on his information. Like you don't want to move in and say, and then, uh, at spending two hundred fifty dollars for condo fees, and then a year later it's five hundred and fifty. Like it's that that 
that hurts a lot of people. Like, how oh, it does. It's and it's and it's and it's mind boggling. It's big. It's a lot of money. Like, I, I know my parents moved into a condo. They didn't have air conditioning in the hallways, so their hallways were all hot. And the thing is, they had no. They didn't. And again, this was something that it wasn't a requirement to air condition the hallways. But then they all said, like, we're dying in the summer in the hallways. It's terrible. So they had to put in air conditioning in the hallways. Now, at that, you know, so so it's those kind of things that they can beg, borrow, and steal a little bit. I think the other thing is people got to look at those furnace uh, contracts and water heater contracts too in condos mm. because no one's buying any. You're you're not buying it with a with a with a furnace and a water heater. Those are all leased. And they're oh. big buyouts as well. So, you know, this is how the builders have, you know, and I don't want to demonize them, but, you know, they, they're looking at every corner. Like before oh. you used to buy a house, you own the furnace. Like, that's for right. God's sakes, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, 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 now you, gotta know, you don't know if you do or not. <laughs> well, the, fur- the furnace is a rental now. Most, most yep. uh, homes, uh, like especially a townhouse, the furnaces are rentals. Air conditioners is a rental. Yep. And uh, so is the water heater. Like, I mean, there's not mm-hmm. like... Like, I mean, you're, you've got maybe $250 in uh, rental payments b- between all three things and uh, before you move in. Like, it's just, yeah. you know, but mm-hmm. and, yeah. and banks, I don't know. Like, like Brian, like when you guys are working out, if somebody can afford, you're not even thinking about the rental. No. On, on Doesn't the, go into the couch. Well, you know what? We take the principal interest taxes. He, even the heat is probably grossly underrated still from a financing oh, sure. perspective, right? Because... You know, the heating calculation that we use right now could be anywhere from 85 to to $100, right? Or maybe 125 yeah, yeah. It depends on the size of the property. But, you know, th- there's a lot of cal- – like, we don't take hydro into consideration. Yeah, right? like, I mean, like – You like, got to pay hydro, like, but it doesn't go into that, that calculation, so. It, what about condos? Obviously, when you're doing the condos – Condo you, fee you, does. You, yeah, the condo it, fee it, does. But, again, to your point, like, if a condo fee doubles, like – that's like you guys really didn't expect yeah. that's going to affect your borrowing power, right? So if you move in and it's 200 bucks a month and all of a sudden 12 months, it goes to 400. Well, good luck refinancing, renewing or doing anything. If that's going to, that's going to put your ratios way out. Well, so, there you, you go. refinance with that number, right? That's correct. Right. You are you're refinancing. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, so you, you would want actually, to refinance. Yeah. You'd so need, you would actually be, need that number of that condo, how much the condo fees are if you're refinancing. So if you're refinancing, right, like if the condo fee's gone up 100% or 200%, it's going to affect your borrowing power, right? But do and you guys ask too, for that? But you guys ask for that, Brian? Is that Well, is we, that... Do, we do on the initial approval, right? So as soon as you do the approval, we need to have the condo fees. They get built into the calculation for condos, right? But then we don't look at it again through the term of the mortgage, right? If the term of the mortgage comes up again in five years, if they're just going to renew, People don't get re-adjudicated. That's why a lot of times people stay with their banks. But if they're going to refinance, okay. add some money to it, then we bring in the condo fee, the new taxes, the new car loan. We bring in everything to it again. Wow. Mm, wow. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Very mm. crazy. Crazy. Another mm. thing here is baby boomers and Gen X are taking on more mortgage debt. So now if you look at it, not maybe not Brian's parents, but Conrad, our parents' a generation, yep. they yep. – mm-hmm. They paid everything off fast. I know. Yes. And yeah, they're mortgage and, free. Yeah. And, and mortgage free. They, and and that was and that's it. Now, is it is it? I guess it's different. Like the the new generation, the boomers now, they're just like, hey, yeah, I, I want that money to do whatever. Uh, I guess they're working longer. I guess so they so they can pay the mortgage or or is their pensions paying for the mortgage? Or they're, or they're doing reverse mortgages, and Brian can speak to that. But reverse mortgages are on the uh, you know they're on the rise. Uh, I I think you're going to yeah. start to see. Uh, the five charter banks get involved in reverse mortgages as well. Uh, RBC just did a study. It was kind of a sad study uh, that that people are borrowing against their home reverse mortgages, not not only to help their their kids and grandkids to buy properties, but also just regular living, uh, mm-hmm. which was kind of scary. <laughs> like when I thought just the regular living expenses, just to carry them through uh, some tough time. And and these baby boomers kids have an expectation and sort of their grandkids. So yeah, and, and, and there's a lot of fear amongst uh, elderly that they're not going to have enough money uh, to retire because of what, what is happening here, right? So yeah. And, and I think a lot of the elderly too, to your point, they're staying in their house, right? You got to think for people in their 70s now, do I want to sell my house where I've lived for the past 20 years and move into a retirement home? Or I can bring in uh, a PSW, you know, a personal support mm-hmm. worker. I can bring them in two, three times a week. Doesn't cost me that much. Maybe I move. 
you know, the washer dryer to the main floor from the basement. And then if I do take out a reverse mortgage, you got to think a lot of these boomers have properties that are 700, a million. There yep. has some value yep. there. And if it's paid off, if they take out $200,000 with no payments just to subsidize their living, it's because they don't want to sell, take all the equity out and move into a retirement home. They still want to have the backyard. They still want to have the place. Yeah. And, and, and there's still, and I think there's still a massive amount of like wealth transfer that will happen there because even if they yeah. take out, you know, because a reverse mortgage, it, the average one is really only 30 to 40% of the value of the home. You can't go over 50% of a value of a home for a reverse mortgage. Yeah. So, so if you got to so, go ahead, sorry. Yeah. No. So question to ask you, does, does the kids that inherit the property when the parents are gone, Let's say, let's say we got a million dollar property. They got a five hundred thousand dollar reverse mortgage on it. When they sell, is there penalties on that? Like there would like, be, a, what, like, there like would let's, be, let's so say the, they, yeah. They took out five hundred thousand dollars. Three years later, the parents pass away. Yeah, they, they, they took five hundred thousand out of the million dollar house, and whatever they did with it, maybe some is in the bank. Some, a lot of it's been spent. What when you sell that house, how much equity do they take from uh, from the uh, the home? So what happens home? is that they have balloon payments. So the whole idea of a reverse mortgage is that instead of making payments, the payments go on top. So just for simple math, if the payments were two grand a month, that would be twenty four thousand. So then they would owe five hundred and twenty four thousand at the end of year one. And one, then let's yeah. say five. Yeah, and then at the end of year two, it would be 550000 let's say, yeah. and then so on and so forth, right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, if they own that for three years, just based on that math, they would owe five hundred and let's say, $75,000, let us say, right? Wow. So then, wow. So then, yeah. but it's yeah. just, but they didn't make any payments on it, right? Right, right. So, so there's, a lot, there's a lot of disappointments out there when people think they inherited the house. <laughs> well, there's, there's a, a lot of... There's a lot of kids that hate what? the reverse mortgage. They're like, no, don't yeah. take it. Don't take it. But it's like, what's the alternative, right? The alternative yeah, is yeah. I'm going to come move in with you. You know what I yeah, mean? Or are you yeah, going to yeah. stay in the house? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. I don't no, but know. Th there, there's pay gotta be a... or pay later. <laughs> yeah. But there's got to be, there's got to be a lot of surprises out there. There's got to oh, be. Sure there is. There, yeah. there, there, I, think, when... I think there is some, but I, I also think too, because real estate's gone up so much, I, I like to think, and maybe I'm a little bit optimistic, but I like to think that people are like, okay, mom and dad took out a reverse mortgage for 300 grand, but holy jump and the house is worth a million. Hmm? Me sure. and me and bro still get 300 grand or 350. Like that's still, you know, yeah. still quite a chunk of change. You know, now, so. what, now what happens if they live there? Once they hit the ceiling of the value, they say, hey, guys, now you're going to have then, to sell this house. Is that correct? They knock on your door. Yeah, <laughs> that, I, I got to tell you, never seen it happen. Never yeah. seen it. And you got to think because people don't get a reverse mortgage until they're in their late 60s, right? Yeah. Like 65, 67. And, and, and they'll only go up to half the value. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But right. the original so, ones, Brian. The original Brian, the original ones, and I know an appraiser that had to you know, that was working with one of these reverse mortgage companies. The original ones were like eighty, up to eighty-five percent. Mm. Oh, so those so guys got was, screwed. Yes. And then when the market yeah, okay. shifted, like you know what I mean. So yeah, there was about <laughs> at least you know those old ones. Like if you did, if you found sense. out, found those people. Yeah, those old ones. They had to go in, appraise it. They sent an appraisal in, appraiser in, and they and there is a threshold, and they they had to sell the house. Yeah, without a doubt, because yeah. there would be. That's they, probably they why they no... changed the rules. Then, yeah, that's probably why yes. they changed it to fifty percent. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. especially yeah. now that you have to do that now. Now, uh, real estate, we like record shows since nineteen sixty, house prices doubled, uh, doubled every ten years except the the nineties. That was a it just mm -hmm. kind of stayed stagnant there, but. Uh, but yeah, no, the uh, so I didn't realize uh, that uh, that much debt with the reverse mortgages. I mean, and I yeah. know they're advertising it on TV a lot. Like the, the we got that uh, skater yeah. there. What's his well, name? Well, to Conrad's skater. point, not only the banks are getting into it, but like that, like there's a lot of people jumping into it because there's a lot of money in those mortgages, and they're not they're not expensive either. I think the last one I saw was anywhere between four and a half to five percent. So it's so, it's not yeah. that above market rates right now either. Yeah. And, and, and seniors are using as a top up as well. So let's say they have a yeah. home that's seven fifty eight hundred, and they're the place they're buying is in a retirement area, and it's like yeah. nine hundred nine fifty. They're taking the reverse mortgage on the purchase, so that they they can the delta, so they can you know they can pay the delta, and and this is how they get they move on their way, right? 
Right. Instead of yeah. in their two story, 750,000, 800,000 home, they buy a bungalow for around 900, 950, and they use the differential uh, to, 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 to bridge the gap, right? So they use a reverse mortgage. So it's a great little top up. So if you have clients and things like that, it's a great use. Look, everybody's got to remember, these are financial instruments. They are yes. they are here to help you from, to get from point A to point B, no matter yeah. what. I don't care what point B is, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Helping your yeah. kids or moving to a bungalow or whatever it is. It's These are financial instruments, and that's what well, they're there for. They're well, then and you know started what? in the U.S., right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the U.S., yes. I'm not sure Go, go ahead, Brian. Yeah. Go ahead, oh, Brian. I don't know. What are you gonna say? I was just going to say that I think the house – you know, when you say financial instruments, the house is the number one financial instrument still. And you look at our parents' generation that even lived through the 90s and the tougher times with the higher interest rates, biggest source of wealth still. Biggest source of wealth is still the real estate. Now they use it as the bank account. They take out the reverse mortgage. So it's just like the longer that you're in that house for when you're 60, you're 70, guess what? If you don't have a pension because you're self-employed, now you do. You got a you got a two million dollar house now for those first time home buyers who are waiting. You got a two million dollar house now, and that's how you're probably going to subsidize your income 30, 40 years from now as well, too. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, guys, listen, I uh, appreciate your time and uh, thank you. And uh, just uh, uh, be careful on uh, buying a condo and, and look up the <laughs> look, look it up. And yeah. uh, and those uh, people looking for reverse mortgages really think about it twice, or and it, and it or don't tell your kids because they'll say not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> they will say not to do it. Yeah, totally. Totally. So yeah. anyway, guys, thanks for being on, and we'll catch you next week. Great.